Good day everyone and welcome to another tutorial. Today we'll be talking about how to do cell shading within a scene that has very soft shadows. This is a compositing method, so as you can see we already have a scene set up. In the example that played at the start of the tutorial you saw what it looked like before and what it looks like after. Now this method can be broken up into two segments. The first segment would be the basic method of separating the two so that you have really good cell shading with really soft shadows in the background and the second part will be how to just finish it off so it looks a little bit more painted apart from the 2D objects. So let's get started. Under your render layers you will just add another one and call the first one freestyle because it already has freestyle set up on it and I want you to disable edge and strand we don't have any strands in this particular scene that's why we disable it and we also disable halo you can take out the z-pass and only block out environment lighting now the reason we block out environment lighting is because in your world settings you have to adjust the environment lighting to create smooth shadows when objects go close to each other. For example, if the Suzanne monkey head is close to the ground, it's going to create a soft black area underneath the monkey head. So what we do here is we set the attenuation distance to 10. The environment lighting, we can start off at about 0.3. You can adjust this later if you want more or less. That's up to you. And because this is a, this is a tutorial and I want to record it, as fast as possible. I'm only going to be using five samples, but in the example that you saw at the start, it had a much higher sample. So go back to your render layer settings and select the second one, double click on it and call it background. For it, you just disable freestyle, strand and edge. You leave the sky, you can take out the halo. You can leave Z, it's, we're not going to be using it, um, but it is an option if you want to use it. I prefer to just disable anything that we're not going to be benefiting from. Uh, you also tick ambient occlusion and you turn it off so that it's not included within your render. It gives us more control. You tick normal because it's going to be giving us that border effect that you see in paintings sometimes, especially if there's a lot of really strong geometry. And of course we need our material index. That looks great. A tip I want to give you is when you do ambient occlusion as an addition to your uh, render, I want you to notice if you have transparent objects that have textures on them, Blender does not see them as the textures that they are. Blender sees them as they are in the 3D viewport. So what I want you to do is I want you to make sure that whatever you want separate has a separate pass. So in this case I'm going to make the leaves have a pass of 2. It is separate from the 2D objects because it's not a 2D shape. I still want it to be um, isolated. So my 2D shapes are set to be a pass index of 5. Now it doesn't have to be 5, it can be 6, it can be 2000, it doesn't matter. It just matters that it has to be different from the trees and it shouldn't be the same as any kind of object in the background. Um, the same trick that I just talked about for the um, trees here is something that you also need to apply for the clouds if you have clouds in your scene. Uh, when you add ambient occlusion or when you add the normal effect that we use to create those um, borders, you'll find that clouds with black outlines look kind of odd. So it's better not to add those lines over the clouds. It's better to have them isolated and wipe them out before you multiply your ambient occlusion and outlines over the background image. Okay, so with that sorted, we are good. Now let's get to the more complex part. Now you see we have a sun lamp in here. You can just add a sun lamp to your scene if you don't have one already. Go down to its settings for shadow, make sure ray shadow is ticked, set the samples, again I'm going to be using 5 for this, a soft size of about 30, just play around with the values until you get something that you're happy with. Just remember to keep this fairly low until you're ready to go for your final render. Now, under your background we're going to be adding a light group. 
This sun is going to be its own light group because we don't have any other lamps um, for this particular layer. So just press Ctrl G and call this sun soft and select the group here. Now basically what this does is it means that this layer will only be using the lights that are in this particular group. We only want this sun lamp affecting this scene for this layer. Now you're going to be duplicating this moving it over and removing it so that it's not part of that same group. See this one is still part of the group. We don't want this one to be because this is going to be the sun that's going to our second layer to light our 2D objects. So in ray shadow for the sun you select the samples and you take it down to its minimum which is 1 and the soft size can, you can set back to its default of 0.1 it's not going to make any difference. Okay, now make sure that this layer only is not ticked. If it is ticked, it's going to ignore our 3D shapes in the background and the foreground in some instances, but you understand what I mean. So that's good. Just make sure it is on the second layer. Now go back to your render layer settings and on the background, only select the background section and on freestyle select the second layer and mask the first one. The first one is our background elements. Okay now let's go to our second layer. Now as you can see we have the monkeys on both the first and the second layer. The reason for this is so that all the lighting operates correctly. It's kind of like you want the objects to be on both layers but you don't want to duplicate them in case you miss something. You want an object to throw smooth shadows but receive flat ones. Now you can move a single object over two layers by simply selecting it and pressing M. And if you only have it on one layer, just select the second one by holding shift and clicking on the next layer as well. Just quickly added screen cast keys there, so I, it was off until now. Okay, now as you can see there is something on my third layer. It's just a bunch of buildings. You can ignore those. Because they are a particle system in here. As you can see, they overlap a lot, but they're a background element. Our sun lamps need to correspond. So what I'm going to be doing is adding a constraint after I rename this thing. I saw I forgot to rename it to sun tomb. I'm going to be adding a constraint to it to copy the rotation of the other sun. So all you need to do is type in sun soft. Now if you rotate this one, you can see the other one rotates with it. Okay, that looks great. I think we are actually ready to do a render and move into compositing. So let's hit render. Okay, now I see already we forgot to tick something and that is under the freestyle render layer. We do not want the sky. We want all this to be black. So I'm just going to be re-rendering it. As you can see, I just uh, tick this little button here. Uh, what this does is it renders only the active layer, the one that's highlighted in blue. So another thing um, I haven't told you yet is that we don't want these harsh shadows. We want to have some form of environment lighting. So I want you to go into 3D view and go to your second layer. As you can see, my 3D cursor is off to the side. Yours doesn't have to be because what we're adding doesn't affect the final render other than the lighting. So what I want you to add is I want you to add six hemi lights but we're going to be working them sequentially. So instead of shift D we're going to be pressing alt D to duplicate it, rotate it along the x-axis 180 degrees, pull it up. I want you to duplicate these, alt D, rotate along the x-axis 90 degrees, duplicate these same ones and rotate them along the z-axis 90 degrees. Now if you change only one, it'll change every one because Alt-D duplicates the object data as well. So you can see if I turn off the specular value, which is what I want you to do, you'll see every one of them has the specular value removed. Wonderful. I'm setting this at a low value, like 0.1 is a good idea, especially if your environment lighting is at 0.3. Okay, that is wonderful. Now let's do that render again. See, makes a big difference. 
Okay. Make sure you untick that after you've fixed your freestyle section. Ah, your, yeah, your freestyle section. Let's also turn on freestyle. I forgot to turn it on. Now mine is set to relative under the render layers. You can also see that my default settings are fairly selective. Um, thickness is 1.1 overall. I also have no modifiers active at the moment. You can just copy these settings if you want to. Okay, so let's add freestyle as well and re-render the freestyle render layer. Okay, that looks much better. Uh, something to remember, if I forget to add the composite node at the end, it's not because it's not necessary, just add it. I'm going to remove it for the moment. Okay, now duplicate this little node. You can use Shift D to do that and select the background layer. And I want you to see what it looks like when you compare the two. So I'm going to place that one in there. Don't need the second one. Okay, now look at the blue of the monkey. Specifically this area. You'll see it's exactly the same. That's how close the setting is of 0.1 for the environment lighting on the Hemi lamps. It's always a good idea to do this if you are using uh, separate sections for lamps. Okay, let's take that out. Now, first thing we need to do is we need to add this, our freestyle objects, as a mask that's pure black over our background layer. This is for our dilate and erode for later on. So uh, it's easy to do that. All you need to do is go into your Converter section, Shift-A, Converter, use ID Mask, go to the second render layer, just get a viewer. I think the viewer is off to the right, but uh, whatever. Uh, and we need to select our 2D shapes. Look very nice. And we need to add a mix node because we need to see how well they mix. This will go into the black, and this will be made black. Okay, now you can see already, let me just zoom in, we already have a slight outline. Don't worry about this outline, we need to focus on this one. So in order to fix that, you can just simply add a blur node. Save it to fast Gaussian. Correction on the Y. Uh, let's go for 0.2 and add it over itself. Just remember to clamp, otherwise it goes above one. And set it to be, uh, I think I went for 20 or 15. Let's go with 15, 15 is good. So I'm gonna delete that, okay. That looks very nice. Let's just see these other ones in the background. Yes, that works. Okay, I'm happy with this. And now we can start editing this little back part over here, or if you're happy with this, you can just stick that in there and there you go. Tune shaded with smooth shadows already working. I, on the other hand, want to take it a lot further than this, so I am going to be taking you further. Now obviously this area over here will be our focus because most of our adjustments go on the background. First things first, ambient occlusion. So go mix and add another viewer node. I want you to see what the ambient occlusion looks like. There we go. As you can see, it only sees these shapes. Like I said before, you want to be aware of these things before you start a project. That's why I um, specifically gave this a different pass, so I can just add over this ambient occlusion and it not be an issue. So what you can do is you can just duplicate this little node and set it to 1. That's the value I gave it earlier. I hope it's still 1. I don't know. No, it's no longer 1. Uh, made it 2. See? Check. You have to check stuff. Uh, add a blur node. Also fast Gaussian, again, let's make this have a blur value of 0.5 and put this over the ambient occlusion. You see there's a little AO section in the render layer there. Okay. 
select add it's a good idea to clamp it let's add it over itself once just to thicken it up yeah that's good okay give it a slight blur before adding me ah multiplying it <laughs> adding it <laughs> okay just smooths it out and select multiply going back to our original source obviously not that I think it would be this one no it's this let's take this out I want to see what See, this needs to be switched around. That needs to go in there, that needs to be taken out. And this is the value we want to multiply it over, like that. Okay, see, that's much better. Let's just lighten it up for the sake of the trees section. I mean, look at that. Uh, let me increase it like 250 so you can see what it does. See, it creates these bright areas around the trees. It's just part of that geometry issue. So if you want to, you can use about 0.5. That's what I like to use. Let me just show you that there is a difference if you use 0.5 versus nothing. See, quite quite a difference. Just enhances the contrast. And remember to clamp it often. Okay, that looks nice. Now let's quickly do that normal thing that I told you about earlier. So go out of your node, select the normal. Again, we're going to have to white out the trees. That's not a problem. We can just use this. Uh, add a blur node and add a mix node. In order to get a, an outline from the normal values, we just need to create a slight difference between the two. So go relative and set this to be 0.15, 0.15 and go get another copy and say difference see creates this rainbowish color thing so if you now go into converter and you select rgb to black and white does that and if you go color invert you get your black outline just need to multiply it over itself by about five looks good now we add our tree color thing we created over here just to white it out if you want to you can reduce it I prefer to keep it fairly strong clamp it again and multiply our outline over our image which is over here Okay. Now, the closest or the best place you'll notice it is over here. Remember that, let me just quickly show you. Remember that you don't want this to be too obvious. If this is too obvious, it, it looks really terrible. Um, so what I often do is I just slightly blur this. I know it's already been blurred, but I blur it slightly more just to soften the look because if you look at it like at 50 no 50 is a bit much let's go 25 and it's not blurred you can see that there are these gaps and it breaks up and all that kind of stuff so it, it just it's just terrible if you can at all just blur it okay set that back on one that looks very nice and now for my favorite part, creating that slightly painterly look, go into filter, dilate and erode, set it to 1, and go color mix, set it to screen, and add this over. Remember the second value affects the first value, let's just press Z to center and zoom. Uh, go to converter color ramp and stick it in between the dilate road and the screen mix so that we can just turn the white value down to 0.75 
and we can just blur our colors slightly so that the outlines don't show super strong and use about 0.2 Okay, now you can see our colors are still fairly dull. Under color, you will find use saturation of value. You can set that to 1.3 saturation, and you'll see we have our color back. And that is basically it. You just add this back in there. No, I think it's there. No, it's actually... You have to duplicate this. And we have to add our 2D shapes and of course our finished background. And that should give us, if we have it in the right order, a much more finished image. Just for some final pizzazz, I'm going to add a quick blur and a quick vignette. These are not strange notes to you. You've, if you've watched any of my tutorials, you'll, you'll have noticed these before. And that is all there is to it. I hope you can use this in your project. I'm super glad the Holy Spirit helped me do this. Um, and I'm glad I got to share this with you. If you make something cool, share it in the comments below. Uh, have a great one and God bless.